we've had such a wonderful colleague in this whole project in George Takei. And uh, I'm sure many of you were in McGee today to hear his talk about, drawn from his memories about his time here and what it meant to him in his life. is one of the most moving and I think important talks like that I've ever had the privilege to hear. And he's going to share just a little bit more of that story with you today for those of you who may not have been there. And we want to thank George for all the time and commitment he's made not only to this project, but helping us all understand what happened to Japanese American citizens during this time. So help me welcome George Takei. Thank you very much. This is the third time that I've been back here since I left as a boy. The first time I came here with a lot of memories welling up in my mind and trying to uh, validate that. There were pools of water out here. The barbed wire fence was right around here. And there was a roadway and a ditch there. And I used to catch polywogs in that ditch and watch them sprout legs and magically turn into frogs. And beyond the barbed wire fence, there were pools of water and trees growing out of them. And so in 2004, when I came back here, I wanted to remember whether those were real or not. When I got here, it was all gone. There was no swampy area at all. The uh, land had been all drained and the trees had been cut down and it was miles and miles of ripe cotton growing. It was cotton fields. And uh, the second time I came back was uh, last year when I had the unique privilege of working with the uh, Little Rock Symphony Orchestra narrating uh, a Schoenberg piece. And uh, I wanted to extend that visit to, again to come back here to uh, Roar. And I expected to see miles and miles of cotton fields but they were all gone. It was just plain dirt because it, it was wintertime. I think it was February. And so it was a totally different uh, place from what I had expected to see. And this third visit has been profoundly moving and heartwarming. All of you are here. And this site where I spent... a a small portion of my life. I'm 75 years old, and I was here when I was five and six, so it's a very, very small portion of that 75 years. But it has been the most defining experience in my life, and uh, it's my uh, incarceration here and in the other internment camp that uh, has made me such an active participant in our uh, democracy. And it is so gratifying to come back here and see all of you here who have worked to make this a hallowed ground for America, and certainly for me. And the most important and moving piece of this, this land here is that cemetery, because in the middle of that cemetery is a crumbling monument which will very soon be restored. It's a concrete monument that bears the names of a lot of Japanese American men's names. And it's followed by the day that, or the date, the year that they passed and the place where they died. They were young men who went from imprisonment here in this camp, internment camp, to fight for this country, a country that was imprisoning us and taking all our rights away including the word citizen and now they wanted us to serve in the military and they indeed did serve with amazing incredible heroism they fought with unbelievable courage and indeed incredible patriotism and they sustained the highest combat casualty rate of any unit of its size. They fought in some of the most impossible battles. The uh, Gothic line 
was one of the last strongholds of the uh, Nazis. They were buried into this rock mountainside, and they had been uh, the uh, Allied forces had been doing battle for a half a year, six months. Many many units had fought and uh, not uh, uh, removed the uh, Nazi forces. The 442nd was called in to uh, make that last push. It was an impregnable fortress buried in that rocky uh, mountainside. The 442nd decided to do what was never done in any of the other assaults. The backside of that mountain was a sheer rocky cliff, about uh, 400 feet drop. The Nazis didn't expect an attack from that area. The men of the 442nd decided to do the impossible, to scale that, that sheer cliff and attack from that side. And on a, mo a moonless night, in full combat gear, they began scaling that rocky cliff. And in the darkness, a few men lost their footing or their grip and fell to their death in the ravine below. They all fell silently. Not a single man cried out. The others kept climbing, and at the first light of day, the men of the 442nd attacked. They took the hill and broke the Gothic line. A six-month stalemate was broken by the men of the 442nd in 32 minutes. An amazing achievement. A few of those men who perished in that battle are on that list here in the cemetery. They fought for this country with unbelievable heroism. And their patriotism was beyond American patriotism. They were fought to prove their Americans. They had to prove their Americanism. And they didn't just fight for mom's apple pie, as almost all the others did. They fought to get mom out of imprisonment. They are true, exemplary American heroes. And I look forward to my fourth visit here when I see that monument restored as it should be. And that monument understood not only by the people of McGee or the people of Deshaies County, but all Americans. I hope that they travel from throughout this country here to Deshaies County to visit this cemetery and this monument because it is a hallowed American monument of American patriots. So many people work to make this happen this actual site. I was told that uh, the barrack that I lived in, Block 6, Barrack 2, Unit F, was right around there, and they placed this platform here to signify that, and I feel very honored by that. We were near the barbed wire fence. I was here very briefly just about a year, but my heart and my Americanism lies here, and I thank you all for what you've done to make this an important American landmark. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.